That's the episode I need to see. What's up? What's happening? What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Anime Station, which is a fan thing animation, including TV and movies as well. I'm your host, Jackson Small. Welcome to my review of A Dim Light Amid Despair, Humanity's Comeback, Part 1. Also known as Season 1, Episode 3 of Attack on Titan. This episode is great. Sure, it doesn't have action. Sure, it's not battle-focused. Sure, it doesn't have, like, death and destruction, as the other two episodes did. But what this one has is a solid, straightforward story and great character development. I really, really enjoyed this episode, and I'm excited to talk about it. So, I'm not going to read through, like, a whole summary or nothing. I just pulled this up to help me remember the names of the characters, because remember, guys, first time watch, I'm not going to automatically remember every single detail. So, I'm just going to glance at this every now and then when I need to look at names of characters. And aside from that, mostly stick to the camera and what I know. So, let's begin. First up, uh, we have the guy that we met at the end of episode 2, which is Keith Sadies, Sadies, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, who is the main commandment of the 104th Cadet Corps. And he's doing what a drill sergeant usually does in the army. He's breaking them down psychologically, all his recruits and cadets. And he's passing by, passing off all these insults. And then he ends up finding this one character named Sasha, who um, does the worst thing out of everyone there. <laughs> but it's also one of my favorite funniest jokes that I've seen in a while, and probably undoubtedly my favorite part of the episode. I want to save it to the end because of that, but it is so freaking funny, and I can't wait to talk about it. So after that whole thing, then you have Aaron telling his fellow cadets about what happened at Shigashina, how it fell, and his experience from seeing all these titans tearing down his city, which is a pretty good moment. And then after that, we have the first part of the actual training for these cadets. And that is that they need to learn to balance using the belt of their mobile gear, their mobility gear. And they have to learn how to balance with just the belt. And they have like this whole contraption set up where it's attached with the belt with the cords from the actual gear. But it's attached to these giant wooden planks and they... Crank it up, and you have to balance all your own without any help from the ground or anyone around you. That's legitimately cool. And apparently everyone masters it except for Aaron. Aaron ends up being the one person who continues to struggle. Now, obviously, it does get made fun of for this by a few of the cadets. I mean, that's just inevitable with stories like this, but... He keeps trying and practicing, but he keeps failing, and he ends up becoming scared that he's going to end up being forced to work in the fields and not in battle, because they think he's worthless and he's not worthy of becoming a soldier. And obviously this pisses him off. So, with the help of his friend, uh, what was his name? I apologize, give me one second. Armin. Okay, that's his name. Armin. So his friend Arma, his friend Armin, his sister Mikasa, and they're trying again to balance on this thing. But Aaron just can't do it. Like Mikasa can do it, and his friend can do it. I'm gonna forget his name. Armin. Armin can do it, but for some reason Aaron can't. So they end up going to one of the senior, two of the senior students of this cadet corps and this army for help because apparently they are masters at balancing and utilizing this mobility gear. And they all meet up in this area and they meet these two soldiers. Their names are Reiner and Bertholdt. Bertholdt. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Bertholdt's voiced by Todoroki because the voice is very similar. I believe it's the same voice actor. But they're all talking, and they end up having a lot in common, because, like Aaron, they have also firsthand witnessed the destruction, death, and tragedy that the Titans end up bringing whenever they destroy a village. 
For them, it was their mountain village and their home, which was actually even less prosperous than the cities down below. And if you saw how bad the cities were in the second episode, that's bad. And they weren't even alerted that the Titans were coming, and then by the time they knew it was too late, they were already there and destroyed the whole village. So they want revenge, and they understand why Eren wants revenge, so they decide that they're going to help him. And that's what they do. They do help him. And the next day, they're doing it again, and Eren is in front of Sadie's himself, and it's time for him to try to use his practice to, you know, actual effectiveness. Sorry, I was looking for the word. And it starts lifting up, and at first, due to his determination, he's able to balance on this thing for only a few seconds. And then he ends up falling on his face again. But that's when the commandment, uh, the commandant realizes something. As he lowers him down and he unhooks Aaron from his, from the rig, um, they end up making the discovery that Aaron was using a broken belt without knowing. Someone gave him faulty gear down in the armory. And yet he was able to balance with broken gear for just that brief moment. And that's legitimately impressive. And it shocks the and entire cadet corps to learn that because not even they would be able to balance with broken belts. So Aaron is allowed in. He is officially recruited into the soldier part of the army. And he's now learning how to actually use mobility gear. He's given fresh new gear with a belt that's not broken and he's moving around like it's nothing. And that's pretty much how the episode ends. It's Aaron getting his mobility gear, learning how to use it, and getting fresh gear after he's already done all that hard work just to realize he was using faulty gear. Which is actually a legitimately good twist I didn't see coming. I thought it was one of those where it was just inexperience from the cadet itself. A lot like some of the moments in like um, MHA, for example. And it, it kind of reminds me a bit of the softball throw from MHA when... Uh, Deku's about to use his whole arm with one for all to throw that softball, but Aizawa stops him, and then instead he puts it all into just his finger, learning how to somewhat utilize his power a little bit more effectively, which is something that ends up coming back later in the season finale, which I have a feeling is going to come back and do this too, where he's going to end up with another broken belt, probably from a fight with the Titans, and he's still going to balance and be able to be just as, if not even more effective than he is with his new gear. I have a feeling that's how it's going to go. I'm more than likely wrong, like I said, going into this completely blind, so I have no clue what's going to happen. But yeah, legitimately great episode. We got to uh, meet more soldiers, meet some new characters, and it has the very funny moment that I will get to in just a bit. First, I want to give the final verdict, and then we will get into my favorite part of the episode, which is legitimately funny. So, with that said, my final verdict for A Dim Light Amid Despair, Humanity's Comeback Part 1, for Attack on Titan Season 1, Episode 3, is an 8 out of 10. The best episode that I've seen of this show so far, legitimately entertaining, very engaging, despite being simple and straightforward, it was a very good, it was a very, very great watch. I had a great time. Okay, let's talk about the scene now, <laughs> because I think I've left you guys waiting long enough. Um, so when Sadie's is going down the line and insulting and deprive, uh, psychologically breaking down all these cadets, he ends up finding Sasha, and she's sitting there, standing there in line, <laughs> just casually eating a baked potato. <laughs> And then the commander comes over, and they have an argument. I got, I gotta just describe the scene to you. I'm sorry, I can't do it without laughing. As their commandment continues to go down the line, he notices Sasha eating a stolen baked potato. It's one she literally stole from the mess hall. Everyone is stunned at her complete lack of tact in eating the potato at that exact moment in front of the commandment. 
Then Sasha makes the offer to split the potato in half and gives him a piece before smirking, saying that they can share it. But she ends up being punished by having to A, give up a lot of her meal time, and B, having to run for at least a week until the sun goes down. <laughs> Oh, that scene was great. Like, it caught me off guard. I did not expect a dark series show like this to throw in something that goofy and that funny. But I'm so glad that it did because it's my favorite part of the episode and it cracked me up. <laughs> it was so funny. I really enjoyed that part. Definitely my favorite scene of the episode. Well, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more videos like this almost every single day. That's the only one you're getting for today because I'm not watching Harold and the Purple Grand today. I'm just not feeling up to it. So instead, I will see you guys next time when we get to the next episode of Attack on Titan, the night of the closing ceremony, Humanity's Comeback, Part 2.